Welcome back, boss. What is a sphere of influence in business and why do you need one? Short answer, because it's gonna open doors for you, it's gonna make growth easier, and it's gonna allow you to reach higher level of sales volume than probably ever before. It's also super fun to be really connected with amazing entrepreneurs and influencers in your industry. I'm Amy Walker and I help small business owners and entrepreneurs to be able to create consistent, scalable sales in their business through organic marketing and strategic sales plans. I know how hard you work as an entrepreneur. I know how passionate you are about your product, your service, your message, your impact, your reach. And I know that when you are going after one-to-one -one business, that can be pretty slow and it can feel like a long uphill journey. And your sphere of influence really does have the ability to open up a lot of doors for you and make growth so much faster. So if you want this simple, fast path to accelerated growth, this is where it's at. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you why you need a sphere of influence, who should be in it. And at the end, I'm going to share with you the easiest way to expand your sphere and get more people to say yes to connecting with you. So first, the technical definition of your sphere of influence. It is any entity or person that has the ability to sway the potential customer in your favor. Why would we not want a lot of those people, right? Like I want an army of people out there trying to sway customers to my company instead of just me trying to knock on a door and then, you know, meet one person. We hear a lot in business that your network is your net worth. And this is really true. When I was a newer entrepreneur, I really didn't like this. I was kind of like, no, I'll just do it on my own. It's easier to do it by myself than it is to try to meet all of these people. And uh, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I thought this for two reasons. Number one was I was the kid in school who hated group projects because I was always like, oh, I'm just gonna end up doing all the work and then you guys are all gonna get my A. And number two, I actually really don't like networking. Um, like going to a networking meeting or if I'm speaking at a conference, the part where I'm having to network beforehand or after is super awkward for me. And I thought that that was the only way that you could build your network. And because I didn't see all of the possibilities, I just kind of shoved this aside. And for the first few years was like, no, I'm just gonna build my business on my own. You can do it, but you're gonna work for literally every new client that you get. Whereas last year, um, I did some collaborations and I was more open to meeting and interacting and uh, joint venturing. And I had one partnership, one strategic partnership that brought me $200,000 in sales. So it is very lucrative, it's very worthwhile, and it's also easier and more fun. And if you're wondering why I don't like networking, um, it is because I feel so socially awkward trying to meet a bunch of new strangers at once. Like one-on-one, -on -one, good. One to like a thousand people, good a room full of six strangers that I have to meet all at the same time and I have to do small talk, super awkward. So let's talk about your sphere of influence and who you want in it, what should be involved. So number one is gonna be recommendations and reviews. We like to see reviews. We like to see that other people are enjoying their experience with someone or something. Yesterday, I took my son to the chiropractor and I was looking on his online reviews. I was like, wow, he's got like, 265 reviews and I know he hasn't been in business for super long. And then I got home and I got the text message saying, hey, would you review your experience? And I was like, that's how he's getting his recommendations and reviews. And I would bet that he is the top rated chiropractor in his little town. So definitely worthwhile to put some effort on reviews and recommendations. Next is referral partners. So referral partners are people that are going to, you have, you create one relationship and then they will consistently send other people your way. So I mentioned my awesome referral partner. I have a friend that we are together doing high level women's retreats. So we bring together six and seven figure entrepreneur women. We create connections. Everyone gets to start up new collaborations, new joint venture partnerships. That one experience of hosting two events last year brought me $200,000 in new business. And it was so fun and it was so easy. So can you find somebody that has access to a lot of your ideal clients, doesn't do or want to do what you do and is just happy to send them your way? 
I have another client who is an insurance agent, and this was a couple years back, but uh, I told him to work on finding referral partnerships. So he went and played golf with one of his buddies who was a home builder. And he was like, hey, what would it take for us to do the homeowner's insurance policies for your houses? And he was like, well, we don't do that. That's the title company. So then that builder went to the title company that they were frequently working with and was like, hey, what if we created kind of a partnership here? So the home builder used the title company as their preferred lender. And then the title company used the insurance company as their preferred lender. And it increased his new business by 50% with one relationship. So look for these referral partnerships. They are powerful. The third type of person you want in your sphere of influence are going to be people who host, sponsor, run industry events. Why? Because you want to be at them as a sponsor, as a speaker, as somebody who's on their planning committee so that you can have introductions to all of the important people in your space. Next, association board members. Do you have an association for your industry? If so, who are the people that are running it? Because I promise you, they know all of the important people. Next are the SaaS companies that support your industry. So these are the service as a software companies, the, the systems, the people who run the back end of their businesses. Why? Because they have a lot of users. So if you can create one relationship with the company and they say, yeah, you know what, let's have you come on and do a training for all of our users, you could reach a big percentage of your industry in one marketing campaign. And last is going to be the influencers in your space. So these are the thought leaders. Um, it could be that they are Instagram influencers or you know YouTube or TikTok influencers, but it might be that they are just that person. You know, like you have the top realtor in the state that everybody knows and they know everybody. It could be just finding the people who are the big wigs and they are the influencers. They don't have to have like a social media platform associated with it, but they might. So why do we really want all of these people? Because if you are not building your sphere of influence, then you are working on a one-to-one -one transaction basis. Every time you knock on a door, one person opens and you get to present your business to that single entity. If you are working within your sphere of influence, you are creating a one-to-many opportunity. So I was recently doing a training for a group of really successful entrepreneurs that are all using a loss leader model, meaning that when they bring someone in, they give them something for free and they use Facebook ads to get people to the first free thing. And I was like, that is awesome. We want to decrease the cost per customer because that was what they were originally asking. I was like, we're not really in control of getting those Facebook leads for any cheaper. They already had dialed in their campaigns as much as possible. So I said, why don't we then take every lead and instead of turning it into one sale, we turn it into five. So for every person that comes in and has an amazing experience, let's give them some free coupon codes that then they can go out and pass those along to five other people that are in their same network. So now they're getting more of the good clients because they're taking the ones who actually upsold and now are a good new client and they know people who are also the ideal client. So we want to be figuring out how can we expand this rapidly? How can I find one financial planner who can refer me a whole bunch of entrepreneurs, right? I have a client who does college and career coaching. How can we find one financial planner who can refer her all of the people that are trying to save for college? This is just simply going to help you grow your business faster and easier. It's also a lot less expensive too. If you're digging these tips, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification and like, because when people don't like the videos, YouTube doesn't really like to show them to other people. And I want to be able to help as many entrepreneurs as possible. So do me a solid. Now I promised you that I was going to tell you the easiest, fastest way to consistently connect with people that you want inside of your sphere of influence. It is not reaching out to ask them, to put you in a position or help you or serve you. That's not it. It is always reaching out and finding out how you can serve them. 
So for example, you host an event and you put all the people on your stage and give them a platform. You start a podcast and you interview them. You uh, create digital content for your social media channels and you bring them on board. You find out the events that they're having and you volunteer at it. If you will show up and serve them, that is going to make you memorable. It's going to create an opportunity for connection and it's going to make them excited to actually talk with you because you seem nice and not like another needy jerk who wants stuff for free. I have a suggestion for you for where you can go to start expanding your network. Join me in my private Acquire Facebook group. We are full of really cool entrepreneurs who are there to share best practices and ideas and create collaborations. I hope that you'll come and join us. So we've talked about what is your sphere of influence and why do you need one for business? So the next video that I want you to go watch is Mindset Shift from Employee to Entrepreneur. Thanks boss for being here. I can't wait to see you in the next video.